Hello everyone, I am Janice Renee and welcome to my channel. I am so excited to begin this workbook walkthrough video series where I will be giving you an overview of my recently released passion work, Sermon Development, a workbook for preachers. God has been exceedingly kind to me, allowing me to do what I love to do most, and that is teach preaching. And if you know me, then you know that I, for the last few years, have been working on my PhD in homiletics and liturgics, and right now I'm currently working on my dissertation. But if you know me, then you know that I am also a creative and my passion is bringing together the two things that are most significant in my vocational identity, and that is faith and education. And that's how we got to the Sermon Development Workbook. It is a convergence of my passion as a practitioner and as a scholar of preaching. So in this first video, I'm going to give you an overview of the Sermon Development Workbook and how best to incorporate it into your sermon development process. Today, we're specifically going to look at the three eyes of exegesis. But before we get started, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and let somebody know that this series is now live and I'm going to be walking us through the Sermon Development Workbook process. So without further ado, let's get started. So what is the Sermon Development Workbook? The Sermon Development Workbook is a resource that is designed to help preachers walk through the process of sermon development from idea to outline. The primary goal is to give you everything that you need to write a full manuscript. And this is true even if you are in the preaching moment, a notes preacher or an extemporaneous preacher. The idea is to give you everything that you need in order to develop that sermon. But what's important for us to remember is that every sermon requires thoughtful exegesis. This process of sitting with the text and drawing out from it what's there so that we can have a better understanding. This process requires time, thoughtfulness, respect for the text, its audiences, its languages, its cultures, so that we can be most faithful to what's there in the text. And this is best done by what I like to call the three eyes of exegesis. And the three eyes of exegesis are investigation, inspiration, and information. And each of these three phases build onto one another. And it begins with investigation. Investigation is a non-interpretive assessment of the text. It's a process of getting the text in view, asking the who, the what, the when, and the where's of the text. It's a process of noting what you notice in the text, highlighting repetitions, cultural references, and things of that nature. It even might involve a sensory exploration of the text. The smells, the taste, the touch, the feels. Can you notice those things in the text? It also involves looking at whatever your preaching passage is in its larger literary context. What's going on before it? What's happening after it? What's the entire book trying to get at? What's the entire chapter trying to get at? What is the genre of this passage of scripture? All of these things inform what's actually happening in the text. An investigation phase allows us to be able to begin the process of noting these things, understanding these things, getting these things in view and on paper. It's important to note here that in this phase, we must resist the urge to interpret. In fact, good interpretation is the fruit of good investigation. You cannot interpret what you have not investigated. And after you have finished your process of investigation, the next step is now inspiration. Inspiration is the process of meaning making. It is going back to now look at your investigative notes and to begin to discern in prayer, what is God saying about this particular passage? What might have been the meaning to that original audience? What might be the meaning to my contemporary audience? Um, given what you know about culture and society of, of our present day, the, the context in which your listeners live in, how might these things speak to one another so that the word of God for the people of God might go forth? I like to think of this phase as a playful endeavor in the sense that uh, preaching is, involves the imagination. Uh, the imagination works as a sort of bridge to kind of help us uh, travel from ancient societies to our contemporary societies to see how these two things relate or disassociate from one another. So my encouragement in this phase is to follow your hunches, to ask the questions, to discern in prayer and allow God to lead you to whatever the revelation is which is born out of the investigative work that you've already done. 
which then leads to the information phase where you will now place your findings from the first two phases in conversation with experts, theological, cultural, and biblical experts to either confirm or to correct your anticipated meanings. In other words, what commentaries and critical texts are you in conversation with in the sermon development process? Now is the time to consult with the experts. What I hope that this process reveals to us is that good preaching requires faithful, prayerful, and careful analysis of scripture so that we can be more faithful proclaimers of the word of God. And that's what the Sermon Development Workbook is designed to do, to walk you through a process of careful exegesis that leads to inspiration resulting in proclamation. In the next video, we're gonna talk about how to pull all of that information together to develop a roadmap of source for your sermon. Again, my name is Janice Renee, and I pray that this video was helpful as you dig into the Sermon Development Workbook. If you haven't already, I wanna remind you to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'm gonna be doing a series uh, that continues to go deeper and deeper into the Sermon Development Workbook and how best to use it so that we can become more faithful proclaimers of the gospel. I'll see you in my next video.